Hi everyone, today I'm going to give a presentation of the research paper, an introduction to quantum machine learning. The first time I saw this title, I felt confused as I thought there is no quantum computers in the world today. How it comes the quantum machine learning? Actually, there is a wide range of ideas of quantum machine learning. It could be running computationally costly algorithms or their subroutines efficiently on a quantum computer. It can also be translation of stochastic methods into the language of quantum theory. First, I'd like to give a basic introduction of the paper. In this paper, the author gives a systematic overview of the emerging field of quantum machine learning. It presents the approaches as well as technical details in an accessible way. Also, it discusses the potential of a future theory of quantum learning. Here are the keywords. As mentioned by the author, currently there are two main approaches of quantum machine learning. Quantum algorithms and probabilistic description of quantum theory. First, find quantum algorithms that can take place of classical machine learning algorithm to solve a problem. And here are two other examples. Nearest neighbor kernel and clustering methods. In these cases, expensive distance calculations are speed up by quantum computation. For the second, to use a probabilistic description of quantum theory in order to describe stochastic processes. For example, the hidden quantum Markov models. Next, I would like to give a basic introduction to quantum gates, which is a basic tool we will use in quantum machine learning and will be helpful for us to understand the quantum machine learning examples. In the paper, here are the description by author of quantum gates. Quantum gates are usually expressed as unitary matrices. The matrices operate on a 2 to the power of n dimensional vectors that contain the amplitudes of the 2 to the power of n basis states of n dimensional quantum systems. This looks to be very complicated and hard to understand. Yes, here I will explain it more detailedly. First, let's see the representation of vector of two qubits. The two qubits AB is the outer product of A and B, which has four components 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And how it comes? Like why is four components instead of six, instead of eight? As we know it's two dimensional system and it has states one and state zero for a single qubit. For example, we can have the single qubit A present as alpha one zero and alpha two one, which becomes alpha 1, alpha 2, b equals beta 1, 0, beta 2, 1, which vector is beta 1, beta 2. Okay, so sorry. Here, for example, if we have a quantum state zero as 
So what will be its uh, factor? Uh, let's let's assume the a is zero. So half one equals one, and half two equals zero, right? If a is one, so half one equals zero. We have zero here, and half half two will equals one. So it becomes zero one. And by doing the outer product, we can see it will have zero zero, right? And coefficient v zero zero will equal alpha one beta one, right? Coefficient uh, for zero one v zero one will become right. Sorry, data mistakes here. This should be one here. Coefficient of zero one will become alpha one multiply beta one uh, beta two right zero one coefficient of one zero v one zero equals to alpha two alpha two beta one and last coefficient of 1 1 v 1 1 will equal to alpha 2 beta 2 thus we know how to define the, the matrices vector matrices for the two qubit states it's in this format and uh, so for the four qubit system it will be it will have 16 elements in the matrices which is uh, 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 4 right and so on so here are some examples of the quantum gates. Here I would like to introduce the Hartmann quantum gates, which we will use for later examples. And so let's write it here. Let's suppose we have a, a input of which is a basic states basic states zero which has a vector as one zero right because it has one of zero and uh, non ones by acting the edge gate what do we will get Let's do the multiplication of the matrices. This is the edge gate, one, one. a vector matrix of dimension 2 so the first is 1 1 and the second is also 1 second row so now we can get the output which is this format so basically the edge gate can put a single cubic basis state into equal superposition so for for the cubic s basis state one what will it become if it's if it's one here instead of one zero by doing the multiplication we can see it becomes 
one minus one. It's also the equal superposition. Okay, here are the another example, which is the XOR gate. Now here is the matrices of the XOR gate, so two to the power of two dimension, because we have two cubic states. From this, we know it's a two cubic states. If it's four, it will be like this, right? Or like this. Or like this. But now we only have two here. And what's the uh, coefficient for each element? So we have zero, zero here. We have one, one here. They have equal coefficient. But we don't have one zero one or one zero, so we simply we can get this vector, which rep represents the two cubic states phi. Right, so the v zero zero is one. This is v one one, v va sorry v zero one. So v one zero, and v one one. By doing the multiplication of matrices, we can simply get the results the output vector, which is in this format. So the if coefficient of v zero zero is right, and the coefficient of is one zero here, it's one one zero one zero zero. The coefficient of v one zero is over square 2. Now we can get the output, which is consistent with the result. Okay, so here are the introduction of the quantum, con quantum gate operation. And next, I would like to, to present a example reviewed by the author which is a uh, quantum routines of k nearest neighbor methods. This is very popular and simple stand book stand stand test book method for pattern classification. So basically it means giving a training set t of future vectors with their respective classifications as well as an unclassified input vector x. The idea is to choose the class x for the new input that ap appears most amo often amongst its k nearest neighbors. So we have unknown class here, or we have other, we know it's other characteristics as a vector and we want to know the class of this 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 item so we will choose we will find the nearest k neighbors for for this example we have this 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 and convincingly we can guess this class is also a yellow because yellow circle because in the k nearest five neighbors which has similar characteristics as this item we have three yellow circles which has the highest weight so and but if we have a k equals one here so this example shows what, what if we have k equals one you can see it's hardly to choose the class for X because it's, there's a lot of noise here. And also if we have too big K, you may find everything like if we have K like this, K equals 15, we will, we will have a lot of items inside. We cannot decide whether it's blue or whether it's yellow, right? So if so basically, I mean, choosing K is not always easy and it can influence the results significantly. 
If k is choosing too big, we lose the low quality information and end up in a simple majority vote over the entire training set, while a very small k leads to a noise-based result. So this is basically the classical uh, ma uh, quantum a uh, quantum not quantum the classical machine learning of k nearest neighbor methods. And uh, so when we go to the quantum we will need the this quantum gate which is defined by the predecessor and uh, we can have we can see here this is uh, what the, the gate here uh, to this gate and to edge gate so this is the swap gate Web gate, and by doing this operation, we can have the probability of the ancilla state as this. So, if probability equals this, which means this equals zero, it shows that the two quantum states A and B do not overlap at all. In other words, they are orthogonal. While if the probability p equals one, which means this equals one, means they have the maximum overlap. By using this definition, which encodes the classical length of factor x into the scalar product of the quantum state with itself, the classical distance between two vectors and v. A and B can consequently be retrieved through a simple quantum swap test of carefully constructed states. And approved by the author of these quantum routines, the speed will be much faster. Okay, so what's the future? Quantum theory of learning is yet outstanding, especially learning methods of parameter optimization have not yet been accepted from a quantum perspective. But the author believes, even though there is still a lot of work to do, quantum machine learning remains a very promising emerging field of research with many potential applications and a, a great theoretical variety. So, let's Let's don't wait, just do the work and uh, maybe we will be the founders for the quant one of the founders for quantum machine learning. If you have any questions, you can contact me through the canvas. Also, I think you can find my email there and uh, can send me email whenever you want. And I will reply as best as I can. Thank you.